welcome back to another episode of Movie Feuds. Adam and I finally saw The Dark Knight. I know, a little bit late to the game. A week ago. Well, okay, the cat's out of the bag. We've had some technical difficulties. This review was supposed to be up a while ago, but... We uh, fired our, our crew. That's we got right. A, we cleaned house. Travis is gone. Jamie's uh, in now. Jamie's in. You're so. not going to screw this up like you did your marriage, right, Jamie? Yeah. This is, uh, <laughs> this is a once-a-lifetime shot for him, so, you know, under seven, seven years of undergrad is really going to pay off. Yeah, just get decaf coffee. I don't even drink coffee. I just like like him to be active, yeah, you know. But, well, oh, Dark Knight let's, Rises. Let's get let's get on with it. Expectations were a little timid going into Rises, short for Dark Knight Rises, because uh, it's following the performance of Heath Ledger, and without that major villain this time around, I mean, you're left with Christian Bale, and that's just not it for me. But Bane, surprisingly, was actually really good. The one thing that uh, you know that I noticed right away is Bane's voice, yeah. and you know they had to kind of tweak a little bit after the first trailer was released because the sound was a little muffled. It was almost like he had a mask on; well, you couldn't hear him. You right. Know? But you know the voice itself kind of it had that surround sound feel to it. it didn't really yeah. match the rest of the audio of the film. It was like he was in the theater when we were watching. Like, oh, hello, Corey. Pass the popcorn. <laughs> I can't inflect correctly. Why didn't you just kill me? Your punishment must be more severe. But the real showstopper, show stealer is probably more appropriate since she was a cat burglar. There you go. And Hathaway. I'm adapted. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Uh, she was definitely the star of the show. You didn't have the expectations for her when they announced that all the other actresses that tried out for that role, I mean, you know, Kira Knightley. Good night. Uh, Olivia Wilde. They weren't wild about her. Blake Lively. Wasn't lively enough. Um, and then Natalie Portman. Hey, nothing? No. Nothing. My mother warned me about getting into cars with strange men. This isn't a car. Probably best uh, best role Anne Hathaway's played to date. I'd throw that out there. Yeah, I, I guess I'd agree. I don't really have anything to back that up. Princess Diaries? I mean, that's, that's her uh, thing. Devil's Prada. Oh, she was, yeah, that's a Meryl Streep, though. Meryl Streep owned that movie. That's true. Can we talk about Devil Wears Prada? Who's Miranda? She's the editor-in-chief of Runway, not to mention a legend. Well, on the flip side of the coin, uh, the two-faced coin, if you will, oh, nice. Uh, you've got Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and, you know, really, he played this detective slash cop, you know, cop made detective, yeah, yeah. but right out of the gate, he had this weird accent, and it really it, threw off the... Uh, from Boston? It just took me out of every scene he was in when... Uh, you know, he's like, forget about it. I'm from Boston. Yeah, I mean, it's not near the, that level. The but only guy in the entire film that had a Boston accent. Yeah, and uh, it just it, it just looked like it was the third rock from the Sun Kid trying to compete with the big boys. There's just a Baton Rouge of characters in this film. I mean, you got the entire cast of Inception basically in there. Mm -hmm. Sans the cap. Uh, Sirius Black has a larger role this time around. Yeah, and, and Gary Oldman. Uh, for those who aren't uh, obsessed with Harry Potter, okay. I was actually pleasantly surprised with Bale's performance this time around too. Normally he's the weakest part of the Batman films for me. Uh, I think it's probably because they gave him very little to say as Batman, which mm -hmm. helps. We don't get that voice. Really, you don't see Batman often. You see a lot of Bruce Wayne, which I thought he always did better at. That's right. Um, but even when he is Batman, the dialogue is, uh, what, maybe 15, 20 lines in the entire film? That's, that's Terminator 3 level of lines. Uh, so. which, which helps his character yeah. quite a bit. You don't get this voice all the time. And the lift. So moving on from characters to plot, I mean, do we want to even talk about the plot? Let's just, I mean, it's three hours long, so there's a lot going on. It might be easier to just say there's a ton of action in this thing. That's right, and it really carries the two hour and 45 minute runtime too, because yeah. it's nonstop action, there's a little bit of a downtime, um, but really the build up and everything, it, it, at two hours and 45 minutes, towards the end of the movie, you, you don't really know when it's gonna end, but you don't really want it to either. I mean, you look at Begins, it's very hard to even see where characters are aligned in a room. And this time around, I feel like I can actually get a feel of what's going on when Bane is fighting Wayne in the rain without Michael Caine because he's in the Spain. Pain or, thank you. Yeah. Remember where you parked? Let me ask you something. What did you think of the bat, the flying vehicle? Yeah, it was a little... Uh a little too much in the film. You saw it a, you saw a lot. And, uh, it, yeah. it, I guess that is another knock on the film. To, uh, you mentioned how we didn't see Batman often. When you do see him, he's either on the motorcycle or in the little bat uh, plane helicopter thing. Um, yeah. you, you see a lot of bat vehicles in the film. And to take that action to the next level, which of course is level 10 for me, 
is the fact that it's soaked with great dialogue. He's a hero. Yeah, there's a ton of great one-liners, memorable quotes. I mean, the trailer, you saw some of that from Catwoman, yeah. but that's actually some of the worst dialogue yeah. in the film. There's a storm coming, Mr. Wayne. And a couple really nice uh, back and forth between Bruce Wayne and Alfred, which yeah. that's a, another great character upbringing too with Michael Caine. So I really like this, actually a lot more than I thought I was going to. Um, I think the difference between this and Dark Knight is, while Dark Knight relies on a great character, Dark Knight Rises has the whole kit and caboodle, the whole cat and caboodle. It's got the action, it's got the dialogue, it's got the characters, so yeah, you know what else it's going to get? It's going to get 19 out of 20 Morgan Freemans from me. Well, I, I love the movie too. I'm going to go ahead and give it uh, 19 out of 21 bat signals. So. Okay, a little lower, but you know, still, still res respectable. Mm -hmm. So now that we, being two expert reviewers, have confirmed Batman's a great film, rush out and see it, the yeah. five of you that still have to. We're, uh, we're really hoping this film actually, or this review, I should say, actually gets to it's the internet. internet yeah. uh, a lot of technical difficulties previously. Ooh, Don't have to worry about Jamie that. Jamie now, we yeah, got Jamie. Travis is gone. Speaking of which, you, get, you ordered those koozies and lanyards, right? Like 40,000 of them oh, for next week? She's shaking well, her head no, well, like just reviews this movie. Like feels. I'm the asshole. Like she's just looking at me. Like I have no hey, clue. Jamie's a Jamie's a guy. You're fired. You're fired. So Travis just said hi. You got Jamie now, who's That's really right. pulling oh, it. Oh, about that. The uh, yeah, Jamie, you got you ordered those koozies and lanyards, right? For the, the, next week's episode. Yeah. Or, She's shaking her head no, like we're, oh. we're like we're the jackasses here, and she doesn't well, know what we're talking about. One of just reviews. This is movie feuds. Jamie, you're fired. Pack your bags. I don't know. Oh, I was just crying. <laughs>